All right, Tuesday morning in New York City. What is up? It is the Boomer and Geo program coming to you live from Built Ford Tub Studio. The number to call, 888-808-1019. Of course, if you're hearing my voice, you are not hearing Geo's. If you hear that CeeLo's on the show, then you're not going to hear Boomer's. The boys are off. They'll be back uh, coming up next Tuesday as we start the sprint to Thanksgiving and the rest of life. Rascona, Flegelman. Good morning, guys. How are you? And CeeLo, good morning to you, sir. How good, you be? I'm doing great. Did you just say the, the sprint to Thanksgiving and the rest of life? Well, yeah. I mean, today's wow, the I first like day that. of the rest of your life. Okay. That's a that's the, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. Jerry. That's the type of All positive. positive outlook and positive. energy we need out of the gate here. Lots of positivity today. Yeah. Just like yesterday, we started with the Yankees. Positivity. Today, yeah. we start with the Yankees. Positivity. positivity. Positive week. I'll tell you this. So... I have been on this thing with, with Aaron Judge now, and guys have gotten on me, why do you not include Shohei Otani when you talk about the best thing you've ever seen and the thing with McMonagall last week and blah, 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 blah. Last night is, an, is another example of why I take Judge over Otani at this point. And it's no home runs last night. He had his thousandth hit. That's nice. They didn't need him to hit home runs last night. They wound up playing a little bit of small ball, some sacrifices. You had the kid Cruz making his big league debut in right field for the Nationals. That was a nice story. You get Jazz Chisholm with the home run, DJ LeMahieu showing a pulse. Like, there were things last night where you didn't need Soto and Judge and Stanton to carry the load. That was great. But he makes a couple of plays in center field, and and while not the greatest plays you will ever see, I think that would be a stretch. I think you'll agree. They are still remarkable plays for a a big lumbering man who can still kind of troll the outfield. And make an impact on a game. And last night, while he doesn't do it with the bat, he's out there every single night playing the field with an opportunity to impact the game in a different way. Whereas Otani right now is not a player in the field. He's a DH. And even when he does come back and pitch, he's pitching every fifth day. And good luck if you win the games he starts because he's probably out after the sixth inning anyway. That's why, to me, Judge is the more complete player and the best I've ever seen. And last night was another example. He just continues to show off the the full package, the full arsenal. And it's funny, we talk about the size, and lumbering is the right word, but also at the same time, the thing that's always amazed me about Judge when you watch him, we're talking specifically about his defense and in the field here is, and I and I was, Jack Curry was on this a lot on the post game last night, and I totally agree with him. I've always felt that way. As, you were up watching the post game? I, I was. But I, but you I know had, your alarm was going off at 2.30. Yes, right? but you got, listen. I'll say this quickly this, before we get off on a tangent. Yeah. Wife and kids are down with the in-laws at Ocean City. So, like, when I got home yesterday, I had plenty of time to take a nice nap in the afternoon. Okay, so, fair, that was always fair. my plan. Got we'll it. sleep on the front end, right. watch the game, enjoy the post-game coverage, especially since the Mets were off, and then you catch a couple hours on the back end. Anyway, um, it amazes me how when you watch him operate, even at the plate, like, <laughs> and this is going to sound like a critique, but it's not never looks like he's at 100%, like going 100% or full on. Like even when he swings the bat, there's an ease to it. In the field, the way he runs, the way even when he throws and he makes the perfect throw to Glaber there as the cutoff man for the double play on on the, the, the ball that he robbed over the fence. There's just such an almost like effortlessness to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's, it is, it's it is remarkable when you think of the size and the strength of this guy, and it feels like he doesn't even have to go full throttle at any point to get to the level that he's playing at. Yeah, no, and, and that has been the case ever since we've seen him, whether it was right field, center field, when you watch him at the plate, he moves. And lumbering wasn't the right word. I just said because he's a mean. big guy yeah. and he's out in center right. field. Right, it's a big but body moving around out there. He's just like, he's done a great job out there. And, you know, people be like, well, I don't want him in center field. He's going to get injured and wear and t- stop. You know, he's an, he is an athlete. And I know he has had his injury issues, some goofy, like the one in Los Angeles, not – so much because of anything other than circumstance. Yeah, that was just bad Kind of like Verdugo last night. Smashed his face in his knee, making a great play in left field. Those things do happen. Um, but, man, if this guy stays healthy, he is something to watch on a day-to-day basis. And I know, I know this is a broken record, but that's what he is. Like, he does something spectacular, not every night, but on a lot of nights. Again, last night he goes one for four, one for five, whatever it was, but he makes two plays in the outfield that has an impact on the game, and it's just like you marvel at it, and – to me, enjoy it because you don't see this often. And two plays in the outfield covering a ton of ground yeah. as well. And that's what, you know, I'm just looking up not to go off the deep ends with, with uh, you know, analytics and advanced metrics or whatever, but the baseball savant page has sort of the percentiles for all the different categories. 
So you pull up Judge's page, and everything's basically in the red. Mm-hmm. He's off the charts, right? But his his sprint speed, he's like 34th percentile. So obviously below league average, right. which, okay, fine. A man of that size is what you expect, but he's still patrolling center field. And last night he goes, to, especially on that first catch, while maybe the degree of difficulty wasn't as much as on the second one going up and over the wall, going all the way back to the very depths of center field. And as he's tracking the ball, you see him twice check to see where the like yeah. taking his eye off the ball momentarily and then finding it again i mean very impressive and yeah, smooth and, and we don't want to go overboard a lot of major league outfielders can track a ball find sure. the wall but i i understand your point you that put he, it all together yes it's just it's as if you know you can take one one specific player and say that's a home run hitter and he's very average at a lot of other things he does the point about judges it's not just the home runs it's as we talked about yesterday it's the home runs it's the hitting for average. It's playing center field. It's scoring runs. It's driving in runs. It's every like I can't. His arm strength is ridiculous. They yep. were talking on the um, I saw in the one highlight package I was watching it on that the Nationals broadcasters were talking about this kid Cruz and his arm strength. Like you're gonna marvel at his arm strength. Well, I've marveled at Judge's arm strength since he's come up. I mean. And again, it looks effortless the way he throws the ball. It almost looks like he has to dial it back a little bit to control it. You know, like when he when he just his his throwing mechanics and the release of the ball just it doesn't look like he's letting cutting it fully loose because he doesn't have to. Yeah. So it's I guess when you're that size, that's what comes with it. You know, and it's just something that we can't understand or put ourselves in those shoes because we're not that big and strong and talented. But it is fun to watch. And you, I was so for you. I've always said for me it was Ken Griffey Jr. until now. What's the best you've ever seen? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, and I don't want. Don't give me Pete Otani. Griffey was a pretty pretty good one. Peak A Rod was was okay. was up there. Now I, I I have no exact way of knowing when the you know when the of juice course. started. Obviously the Bond stuff. And that look, it's unfortunate because we're talking about guys that were great players regardless of oh, sure. whatever they did or didn't do. Uh, but this this level that Judge is playing at right now, this last couple of years, obviously 2022, and what he's doing this year, I mean, I, I don't – in my lifetime, it's hard to come up with anybody that, that topped the level that he's playing at Not right now. Not to mention his April was atrocious. Right. Like you think about what he's doing for the season is one thing. Now you cut a month out of it. And I only mean from the standpoint of there wasn't as I mean it was really very little production in April, and he was being booed, and we were sitting here saying, "What in the hell is wrong with Aaron Judge?" Early on, and so this has really been a run of May, June, July, and now August. I mean, it's it's pretty wild just to think what he can accomplish when he is on. And I mean, we've seen it. People are talking about you know getting to sixty two. Uh, we had one, I think, one caller yesterday said, why wouldn't he get to 68? He's right. I mean, with the way this guy can hit in bunches, never know. it's not out of the realm of possibility that he goes on one of these tears, as we've seen over and over and over again, and he shatters his own record. The month splits since the end of April. Yeah. He was hitting 207 with a 754 OPS, and that wasn't even rock bottom, uh, what were but home, that's what it was. What were home runs and RBIs after April? Or April in April? In April, he hit, because you remember, you had the first, the season started in March. He had a couple days in March. So right. if I combine those, he hit 125 in those first couple of games in March, 220 in April. So let's call it, I don't know, 210, 215. I'm, I'm guessing right, at that. Terrible. Right. With six home runs and 18 RBIs. And in every month <laughs> since then, right, in May, he hit 361, 14 homers, OPS almost 1,400. In June, he hit 409. 11 homers, OPS, almost 14. Give me the RBIs, though. RBIs? I, I think okay. most people understand what OPS is. Give me, Fair give me enough. RBIs. May 27. In a month. Yeah. Right? Uh, June 37. <laughs> In July, he cooled off, hitting 318 with eight homers and 17 RBIs. Terrible. <laughs> and so far in August, he's hitting 425 with 12 homers and 23 It's a RBIs. monster season. Yep. I mean, it is a monster season. And you almost wonder, and I clearly have to do the math on this, and I know you can't do this, but if you didn't have April and those couple of games in March, his batting average might be three seventy five. It's it's got to be. Yeah, I'm sure there's a way I could, you know, it's manipulate right. that somewhere, uh, or obviously do the math and a break. But yeah, to be I where mean, he's at three thirty three now, and he's two oh seven coming out of April, pretty good. Yeah, pretty damn good. So Judge will will has been and will continue to be the story and a story, and there's no doubt about it. A couple of other things from last night that were interesting. Number one, before I get to Nestor Cortez, number one. Um, I know, I know he won there and he was a kid and all that, 
It amazes me, and I think it's I think it's cool. Don't get me wrong, but I'm surprised when I see guys get standing ovations from teams that they're no longer on. Yeah, and I, again, I think it's great. He won there. Um, I know the Nationals would love to have him back, but that's got to be a very neat moment for Juan Soto, given you know tapping the helmet to the crowd yeah. and just kind of cool, especially considering he turned down the big contract offer from them, right? Yeah. That's a factor. But yes, he did win there. I also, part of me has to wonder, I'm not saying all of them, but I'm sure a lot of Yankee fans in attendance last night, which which added to that a little, you know? Perhaps, like, I don't, perhaps. I, I think, it, it, listen, the Nats aren't any good right now. They're rebuilding. I'm sure their attendance, for the most part, hasn't been great. I don't know how many Nationals fans came out last night specifically to see him. Maybe a decent handful. See, I think you get a bunch because they're a draw. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I think like the Yankees, I think do very well on the road because of, of Judge and Soto. So then you add that to the mix. I think you probably had more national fans there last night than you'd think. Yeah, I think for these games that are somewhat local, like Washington, Baltimore, Philly, because of we've you know, we've mm-hmm. talked about it of off course. the air. How especially for those of us that are in New it's Jersey, <laughs> getting to the Bronx or to Queens to see the Mets is very tricky. So sometimes making the trip down, and even when you factor in gas and tolls, the ticket price is being you can spend less going yep. on a road trip with one of your teams locally than going to a home game. It's just the reality of the way the economics work around here. Yeah, right I've now. said forever, going to a Phillies game is so much easier than going to Yankee Stadium sure. or City Field from Central Jersey. Yeah. Hell, I'll even say going to Baltimore. The five or six times we've done it, for me, it's like two hours and ten minutes. Yeah, you can hit some traffic, but it's in the times I've done it, I've never been held up too much. And it's like, wow, I got here in the same amount of time it would take me to get to City Field, which is bizarre. Yep, and you could um, probably pay a lot less to sit a lot closer, at least in years past. Like, I know Baltimore getting better. I'm sure that's changed a little bit down yeah, there they're, they're, to some extent. Their no? attendance has been putrid. Ugh. For a team that's got great expectations and is – couple of games out of first place and had first place for a long time this season. Real, I would say incredibly disappointing to see what their attendance has been. And I don't know what it's going to show in, ter- in terms of paid attendance, but there have been numerous times watching those games or watching the highlights where the place is half empty. I'm look, I don't know how up to date this is, but look, they're like 18th as far as the average That's goes. That's terrible. It's not good when you consider their were a division leader and right there well, behind the Yankees right now. It's not good when you take into account teams like Tampa and Miami. Are you going to play Colorado? I mean, how about the fact, I think Colorado played, who did they play, the Marlins last night? Something like that. Could you imagine, who wants to go watch that game? Somehow they're ahead of Baltimore in oh, average attendance. Now, some I, of it also is the capacity of the parks, but, you know, we get the idea. Yeah, but in, at Camden Yards, you can tell people are not attending the game. Yeah. So, anyway, so you had the Soto stuff. And then the other thing was, we talked yesterday about the starting pitching for the Yankees when the postseason comes. And there have been many guys where you sit there and say, you don't know what you're going to get on a start-to-start basis. Are we starting to see a little bit more consistency from Nestor Cortez to make you think he can be the pitcher we saw a couple of years ago when you felt like he was going to win every time he went out there? I don't know that he's going to get back to that level, which was, you know, he went to the All-Star game that year, uh, and it hasn't really been the same since. But if you give me... Him in a conversation with Rodon or Stroman, the way he's looked in this last sequence until he gave up the home run last night Mm -hmm. was, what, 20 and a third scoreless. So he's the guy that I think you feel most confident in. Or if you were going to pick one to kind of go to war with in a big spot in the playoffs, that's of those three. That's the one I would feel most comfortable running out there. Um, But I'm curious to see how they're going to handle that whole thing, because if Luis Hill comes back and sounds like he might right off of his time up in the I.L., Clark Schmidt's already making his rehab appearances um, I'm curious to see how they're going to handle the rotation come October. Plus, I think they're still short in the bullpen. And I think I put heel in the bullpen. Right. That's what I was going to. I think to me, if you're going to roll with your if you're going to go Cole and whatever, Rodon, Nestor and Stroman as your starters of those four guys, I mean, Cole's a, a given. We know he's in the rotation. No, those other three guys, there's not any of them like, you know what? I think they project really well to the pen or I could see them pitching well out of the pen. Maybe Nestor. Um, but I think that Heal and Schmidt serve more of a purpose out there. Heal's arm should play up. Schmidt has experience doing it, obviously. And they don't really have the dominant deep pen like they have in recent years, Some of the, or at least some of the household proven names. So I think Rodon, the way he's pitched in this last go-around, is sort of solidifying his spot. Uh, and that's the guy that I would feel most comfortable with after Cole. Heal, and I'll probably get... Uh ripped for saying this, but heel to me is a kid, and I know he's a kid and he's got to build up the arm strength to where he doesn't fall off like he kind of has here. He's mid-season. blown past his career high in innings no already. Yeah. Which is why you almost wonder if 
getting him in the bullpen when he's back now, to me, he's got electric stuff. Yeah. And if he's only got electric stuff for an inning or two, and I'm not saying make him the closer. I know a lot of Yankee fans have had enough of Clay Holmes. <laughs> but he's got that strikeout stuff that Holmes doesn't have. Right. Um, and I could see him as if, if Holmes is going to be your guy, and I understand that, maybe he's your eighth inning guy in the postseason. It would be a lot of pressure for a young kid having not done it. But, but it's eighth inning, not ninth inning. Right, right. And, and, they, and there's a need there. I mean, look, some there are some names, and the, the Yankees have done this, like, you know, the Jake Cousins, the Luke Weavers of the world. But if I tell you right now I'm throwing that guy in a high leverage spot in the seventh or eighth inning of a playoff game, I don't know that you feel – maybe they get it done, but, like, you know, the Michael Kings of the world are gone. Wandy Peralta's gone. Loisig is hurt. You know, they obviously, Aroldis Chapman is long gone now. So Holmes has had his warts and his issues. So they don't really have – as many go-to guys on the back end. Tommy Canley's pitched pretty well, and you could say, well, they don't really have a left-hander, but Canley's a guy that gets lefties out because he's got the change-up. So they have some options, but I agree with you. Heels stuff, I would think, would play up in that role, and we've seen Schmidt do it, and he has strikeout stuff as well. So if there's, if there's, it's just where are you going to get the most value out of your available arms? And I think those two guys project better than saying, hey, Nestor, you're going to go out to the pen, and we're going to try and you know match you up late in innings. I don't really see him as that type of guy what if i gave you this comparison rivera to wetland heel to holmes <laughs> and away we go let's calm down that's pretty why let me calm down why calm down for what this is a this is a first place team they're going to be in the postseason yeah let's start some comparisons to 96 i think um i think mo if you go back to that season was was much more established in that role okay. leading into the postseason and We're John, stuff and John Wetland was, I think, probably a little bit more accomplished well, as a closer guy, than though. Holmes. Was. I know, I know. I, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to go there. I didn't say Holmes is Wetland, but I, he's in that spot. And okay, he is going so you're, to be the so you're closer. not comparing the abilities. You're just comparing the setups. Uh, here's what I'm, I'm comparing the setups, and I'm comparing what I could see as the next Mariano Rivera <laughs> in Luis Heel. The kid's electric. He is. He's electric. I, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to, to Mo just yet. I'm just saying. I could see um, it. I could see it. But yeah, I'm curious to see where where he's going to end up because we saw the highest of highs with him working as a starter in that stretch where you had you know BT comparing him to, to Dwight Gooden in 1984. He was or whatever. phenomenal. Right. He was. No, he was. I get it. I get it. But yeah, I wonder because of. Um, the fact that he doesn't have a, a big track record as far as a lot of innings under his belt. Obviously, he's been through his surgery already and coming back from that and kind of caught us all by surprise. And the one thing when he gets into trouble as a starter is is the command and the control sometimes. So maybe that's where him in the bullpen makes a little bit more sense. I hope we get to see it. The story I read this morning about him coming off the ILs for now, they plan to keep him as mm-hmm. a starter. But, um, you know, as we get into September and if they are able to, kind of take control of the division, which the opportunity is there right now. It's two games. Got the Baltimore's lead. playing the Dodgers out in L.A. starting tonight. The Yankees are playing the Nats here in Washington. So it's a chance for them to kind of build up a little bit of a cushion. And then I think as September progresses, it gives you the chance to start to dial in who's going to be in what role. Do we have to move somebody to the pen, get them some innings and some experience there before we get to the postseason? All right, we're going to take a break. We have a lot to do today. So we've got uh, Pat Boyle coming up next. He will give you all the sounds from yesterday. We will have, since um, Pat made it very clear yesterday that he's a comedy movie buff from the 2000s, (laughs) as is the guy to my left, we're going to have them go head-to-head coming up at 645-ish. We've got Steve Peichel and Dylan Harper coming in studio at 8 a.m. from Rutgers. Plus, i got something we're going to tell you about later on as well in regards to that. And you, if you want to get in, 888-808-1019. It's CeeLo and Jerry in for Boomer and Geo on the Fan and CBS Sports Network. 